A talk of one of the most important documentaries in history. The importance of Robert Flattery's Nanook of the North as a foundational film of the documentary genre is centered around the fact that it is one of the first films to successfully encompass all vital documentary elements as described by Bill Nichols. Although not the first documentary filmed, it is indeed the first documentary to combine all respective elements of documentary film into a meaningful cinema piece that speaks to us about actual people and situations. Nichols defines documentary film as a genre through three common sense assumptions, where he states that documentaries are about reality, about real people, and tell stories about what really happened. Coupled with acknowledging the importance of the involvement of the audience, the argument that Nanook of the North is one of the foundational films of documentary becomes quite substantive when also taking into account the unique voice and modes that can be identified through analysis. In order to really explore the importance of Nanook of the North, we must first explore which modes that are employed in the film itself. Nichols describes the differences between movement and modes, where each mode utilizes a different combination of cinematic techniques and acknowledging that modes come into prominence at a given time and place, but they persist and become more pervasive than movements. This will be important to remember when realizing that more often films mix and match modes as the occasion demands, which will also be the case in identifying Nanook of the North as such a critical and foundational film to documentary cinema. The film also exemplifies elements from the expository mode, which is classically understood as the first mode to combine the four basic elements of documentary. As a foundational film in documentary study, Nanook of the North unarguably adheres to the expository mode, but its foundational nature is further solidified through its marriage with the observational mode. In Table 6.2 on page 108, we see identifiers of the observational mode, which emphasizes a direct engagement with the everyday life of subjects as observed by an unobtrusive camera. The filmmaker does not interact with subjects, but only observes them. There are two types of shots in this movie, shots on land and shots on the water, and both are completely unobtrusive to the viewer and subject. It feels like we are bystanders looking at the Inuit family we are following. The film is more enlightening than expository, almost making a spectacle out of Nanook and his family and normalizing certain behaviors that we would normally either find taboo, unacceptable, or just odd in Western society. This includes the fact that Nanook clearly had more than one wife. The fact that many of the scenes were framed, including the walrus hunt and the igloo scene, are completely looked over due to the mode that the film adheres to. This is due to the mode itself, which I believe is the simplest of all the modes. There is no complex interpretation requested of the audience or emotion to be deciphered by the narrative voice. The title cards make sure that this does not complicate things. The fact that there is no voiceover and that each scene is accompanied and predicted by a title card allows for a viewing experience that borders on a learning experience. Furthermore, there is still a very expose aspect closely associated with the film, which may make us believe it is also a hybrid between expository and observational modes. The title cards characterize the film as more expository since we can classify the voice created by those title cards as a classic oration in pursuit of the truth and seeking to inform and move an audience. The only aspect that isn't exactly expository is the fact that the images are continuous whether or not they were filmed at those times or not. The difficult aspect of identifying the nook under one of the modes is taking into consideration of whether or not we know the truth behind the scenes. What is most important to remember is how easily the truth can be manipulated, whether it be an exposition or an observation. However, both modes lead to voice-guided comprehension on behalf of the audience. Although Nanook is classically seen as fitting the expository mode, there are elements of the observational mode that must be considered when understanding the film itself. Whether or not the film is emphasized as more expository or observational largely depends on what aspects of the film the filmmaker wants to explore further. In this case, taking into account examples from the movie and the arguments Nichols provides, the film would be most likely identified through an expository mode.